And welcome back to the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. My name is Chris Wall, joined by Taylor Green. We're five minutes away now from the start of the draft. So get your popcorn ready, get your anticipation ready. It's going to be a fun morning here on WHL Live. To recap, the Prince Albert Raiders hold the number one, number two, and number seven selections in this year's draft. So PA goes one and two. They are followed by the Spokane Chiefs at number three. The Victoria Royals will pick fourth. Well, the Brandon Wheat Kings will round out the top five at the same number in which they selected both Nate Danielson and Eric Fair. Vancouver, two selections in the top ten. They go number six and number eight, straddling that seventh overall selection by the Prince Albert Raiders. And rounding out the top ten, it is Medicine Hat at number nine, and the Everett Silver Tips will pick tenth overall. Taylor, any final thoughts before we jump into high gear? Well, I think we have a very deep cl draft class this year, Chris. Uh, you know, excited for all the families that are watching at home to hear their uh, their names selected for the sons and for the families. You know, to see their uh, their sons' names selected, it's going to be a big day. Really looking forward to what uh, what unfolds here shortly. It's going to be an exciting morning, and we thank you for joining us. The 2023 WHL Prospects Draft is a presentation of Kia, Kubota, Canada the Real Canadian Superstore, and Remax. We'll turn it over now to WHL Commissioner Ron Robison. Good morning and welcome to the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. First of all, I'd like to start by recognizing Connor Bedard, who yesterday was named the recipient of the Four Broncos Memorial Trophy as the WHL Player of the Year. It wasn't that long ago that Connor was the first player selected in the WHL Prospects Draft, and what an incredible impact he has had on the Western Hockey League since that day. Today is one of the most important days for our clubs as they select the next group of prospects who will soon form the nucleus of their franchises. It is also a very exciting time for our prospects and their families as they wait to see which WHL team will select them in this year's WHL Prospects Draft. For those prospects not selected in this year's Prospects Draft, you should not be concerned. The talent evaluation process in the WHL is ongoing. Shea Weber, Jamie Bend and Jerome McGinley are just a few players who were not selected in the WHL prospects draft but went on to have great NHL careers. In fact, nearly 25% of all WHL club rosters are comprised of players who are not selected in the WHL draft. The WHL is a world leader in player development and combined with our fully guaranteed scholarship program and industry leading respect in hockey programs, we believe we provide the best possible environment for players both on and off the ice. That is why the WHL remains the number one destination for prospects in our system and the reason why we continue to be the leading supplier to the National Hockey League, Canada's national teams and the Canadian University hockey programs. I would like to recognize the incredible commitment and the many sacrifices team management and in particular our scouts make each season in preparation for the draft. You spend countless hours in arenas throughout the course of the season and all of you do an excellent job in representing your club and the Western Hockey League. Good luck to all clubs in today's draft, and we look forward to welcoming the young prospects into our league very soon. Good morning, and welcome to the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. This is a very special day for the over 200 players who will be selected during the proceedings today. As well, it is a very important day for our 22 member clubs, as the decisions that they make today will have a huge impact on the club's future. I would like to remind you of a few rules before we get started with the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. The draft is for players born in 2008 who reside in the WHL territory, which includes the western states in the US as well as the western provinces in Canada. Each of our clubs will be allotted five minutes per selection. Trades for draft picks can be made at any time. In conclusion, I would like to wish the best to all of the prospective players and their families, as well as to all of our member clubs on this very exciting day.
And welcome everyone and a pleasant good morning to you. This is the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. My name is Chris Wall. I'm joined by Taylor Green and the hour is finally here, Taylor. The Prince Albert Raiders are on the clock at number one. And boy, it seems like it's been a long winter of anticipation, but it's time to go. It has a long morning for these clubs as well, and uh, the time is finally here. We're going to see all that work throughout the winter, all that scouting uh, for all those hardworking uh, guys pay off. So looking forward to it here, Chris. Of course, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention the WHL scholarship, which is Western Canada's premier hockey scholarship. For every year a player plays in the WHL, they're guaranteed a year of tuition and books at a university of their choice. And this season, 364 players accessed the WHL scholarship, which represents an investment of over $2.4 million. If you have, would like more information on the WHL scholarship, just consult the QR code on your screen. The Prince Albert Raiders are on the clock here as we uh, continue to work toward the first overall pick in the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. Of course, we talked in the pre-show about just how big a day this is for the Prince Albert Raiders, selecting number one, number two, and number seven. And if you're a Prince Albert Raiders fan right now, how excited are you about the future of this team? Well, such a big day, Chris, and we talked a little bit earlier about some of the players they've drafted in that 2007-2006 class that are starting to pay fruition for the team as well. <clears throat> this is a day that can really set the tone with three more prospects in the first round for this team. Prince Albert Raiders fans should be very excited and uh, curious to see where they go here obviously some good defensemen some good forwards on the board positionally at their prospect pool you know there's not a real need they can really go after who they feel is the best player here with this pick Chris so the Raiders are on the clock at number one they will pick at number two as well the Spokane Chiefs hold the third overall selection in the 2023 WHL prospects draft and rounding out the top five are Victoria and the Brandon Wheat Kings. While we wait uh, for this pick, I mean, you know, just just give me a sense here uh, in terms of you know recapping some of the some of the players we talked about in the pre-show and and just players that you know you think uh, could step in in a year's time and, and make an impact in this league. Yeah, well, I think the most Western Hockey League ready player that we see in this draft class is Daxon Rudolph. Uh, again, big defenseman who played at the NAX Academy this year. Um, you know, an exciting player that we, uh, we think is going to be a good player. The pick is in. First overall belongs to the Prince Albert Raiders. Let's go now to Prince Albert. The Director of Player Personnel, Bruno Zarillo, will make the announcement. Hi, welcome from uh, Prince Albert. Uh, congratulations to Winnipeg and Seattle on a great year and a continued success in the final. Good luck to Kamloops on hosting a great event. The PA Raiders are very excited to announce from Lacombe, Alberta, from the NAX program, Daxon Rudolph. Well, an excellent pick here from the Raiders. We've talked about him at the top of the show. This is a very capable, big, strong two-way defenseman. He had an excellent Alberta Cup earlier this uh, this year. Uh, you know, when we look at what Daxon Rudolph brings to the table, it's all three zones of the rink. In the D zone, he's a strong defender, smart, quick feet, able to kill plays instantly in the corners and lean on guys and be physical with his big frame. Great transitional player between the blue lines as well. He moves the puck crisply, putting his forwards in excellent spots consistently, uh, reads play very well in transition, and often Offensively, you know, we saw the production this year at NAX, 55 points in 30 games, led the CSSHL in points by a defenseman, uh, tied for first in defenseman goals in the Canadian Sports School Hockey League as well. This is a player that's offensively dangerous, uh, again, a three-zone player, someone that projects as an excellent player for Prince Albert down the road and a very, very good selection by PA. Daxon Rudolph, defenseman from Alberta, goes first overall to the Prince Albert Raiders. Let's go back to Prince Albert now. Bruno Zarillo, the Raiders Director of Player Personnel, joining us now. Bruno, uh, first of all, congratulations on making this selection. Uh, in your words, tell me how excited are you and the Prince Albert Raiders to welcome Daxon Rudolph into the fold? Oh, we're, we're, we're elated. Like, you know, being able to have like a, a building block like Daxon, we feel is a modern age defenseman that just brings character. Like, he just makes everybody around him better and comes from a winning program, was a captain, great family. You know, we're, we're elated to have him. Tell me a little bit about what, uh, what, what led you guys to, to really hone in on Dax and his skill set, uh, you know, just, just uh, parts about his game that really excite you. 
to me, I just think the game just got, gets quiet. When he has the puck, the game just settles down, and then he's able to to move the puck to the next person who gives him time. It's it's just his his control of the game and his leadership's ability, how he took charge, you know, at, at in his own end, in the corners, in front of his net, breakouts, transition, offensively. You know, he just he just checked all the boxes. This is great, Bruno. We know you have another pick to make. We will get back to you in a couple of minutes here, but thanks very much for this analysis. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Daxon Rudolph, the first overall pick uh, by the Prince Albert Raiders. We are actually uh, joined by Daxon Rudolph uh, here. Uh, he is uh, in Edmonton uh, taking in the proceedings here at the WHL Prospects Draft. Daxon, thanks for joining us. Uh, how excited are you uh, to be a member of the Prince Albert Raiders? Feels great being selected by a great organization, great team. Um, just really proud of myself and uh, really excited to get to work down there in Prince Albert. And just tell me, Daxon, obviously uh, playing at the Northern Alberta Extreme, now you uh, you have a, a WHL club that you belong to. I mean, how excited are you to be part of the league and, and to follow in the footsteps of some some great players? Uh, yeah, the uh, good development team for sure, and they love winning. I'm sure most teams do, but they uh, had some recent success and uh, looking forward to being a part of it in the near future here. And lastly, Daxon, uh, before we let you go, uh, tell me a bit about your season this year at NAX, some of the successes uh, you enjoyed uh, both uh, personally and as a team. Yeah, it's really exciting for sure. Uh, every kid's dream growing up here in Western Canada is to play in the WHL and especially get into it young, and it's just really exciting. Thanks, Daxon. Appreciate this, and congratulations again. Daxon Rudolph, the first overall pick in the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. It's green and gold all over Taylor Green, not just you. Green and gold of the Prince Albert Raiders as well uh, because they have the number two selection, and the pick is in. Let's go back to Prince Albert one more time. The Director of Player Personnel, Bruno Zarillo, will announce the second overall pick in the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. Yeah, the Prince Albert Raiders are excited to announce from Airdrie, Riley Boychuk. Well, an excellent pick here to pair with Dax and Rudolph, a speedy forward Riley Boychuk from Cochrane, Alberta. He played with the Airdrie Extreme this year, 80 points in 33 games for Airdrie, 62 of them being assists. This is probably the best pure setup man in the draft class, Chris. Uh, again, he brings a ton of speed, very threatening to opposing defensemen in the offensive zone, and an extremely smart player as well. Constantly opening up uh, passing lanes with creativity, creating time and space in space, both for himself and for his teammates. Uh, you know, an excellent power play quarterback from the half wall position. Uh, somebody that anytime he's in the zone with the puck on his stick, he's creating offense and making something happen. When you look at Daxon Rudolph, a big two-way defenseman uh, who can kind of steady the ship for them, pairing that with Riley Boychuk, an extremely offensive centerman, a very dangerous player. This is a great start for the Prince Albert Raiders, Chris. So Riley Boychuk, number two overall in the WHL Prospects draft. Let's go back to Prince Albert, Bruno Zarillo, uh, the busiest man of the hour on the line uh, joining us here. Uh, Bruno, I mean, you go with a defenseman first overall, you get a forward second overall, and boy, the first thing that jumps out to me is Riley Boychuk potentially setting up the likes of Ryder Ritchie, Cole Pearden down the line. How excited are you to add this player to your team? No, that's that's correct. Like, that's... We see him as a big part of our future, like, you know, his family, the, the character of the player, which is, you know, second to none and just fits well with our culture. And then, you know, his brain, I, I don't know if you're going to find a better, a better brain in, uh, in, in, in this draft. And his future looks so bright and uh, we're excited he's a part of our group. In speaking with you, Bruno, uh, both today and in years past, uh, characters really seems to be a big part of, of what the Raiders uh, look for in, in, in their drafting uh, practices. I mean, just again, speak to, to what, what Riley will bring to your group in terms of character uh, down the line. No, I think when we evaluate, we, you know, we evaluate, obviously, we want players who, who come from winning cultures. And, uh, you know, Riley went in their league, won the team, won the championship. We, we're looking for players who carry themselves with confidence on the ice, and uh, he provides that. And then we provide we look for kids who are just good people, good 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 off ice, and that that can fit in 
to our environment and can can handle having playing in a small community where 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 you're the show. Appreciate you doing this, Bruno. We know you're not too far away from being on the clock again, but <laughs> congratulations on uh, this pick of Riley Boychuk, and uh, we'll speak to you again shortly. Oh, thank you very much. Riley Boychuk, number two overall to the Prince Albert Raiders, joining fellow Albertan Daxon Rudolph in the Raider fold. We've got Riley Boychuk on the line uh, right now, joining us from uh, his home in Cochrane, Alberta. Riley Welcome to the WHL and to the Prince Albert Raiders. How excited are you today? Oh, yeah, it feels so great. You know, we're, as a family, we're so excited to, to get drafted by such a good organization with uh, lots of history. And, yeah, we're um, really excited and really grateful to get drafted by uh, the Raiders. Of course, a day like today is maybe the culmination of part of your hard work, but the start of another set of hard work. How excited are you to begin your WHL journey? Yeah, well, there's been a lot of uh, really good players and high-level uh, players that have gone through Prince Albert, and uh, I'll do my best to, uh, you know, be the best version of myself when I'm uh, with the team. And, yeah, it's obviously, like you said, they've had a lot of past history, and, you know, hopefully when uh, I'm there, we can, you know, kind of, regain some of that history and win a few championships so yeah it's going to be a, a good future ahead and hopefully you know there's still a lot of work to be done with everything but uh, we're looking forward to it and I'm really excited. Riley a great year for yourself in the Airdrie Extreme uh, 80 points for you speak a little bit to uh, you know just some of the successes that you enjoyed this season. Yeah, well, I've been uh, my career I've been really lucky because I've been on a, a lot of good teams and a lot of uh uh, really good uh, high-level teams that have played uh, and, you know, battled for championships and have won a lot of games and had a lot of success. So I'm uh, grateful for that. And, yeah, it's obviously been one of a big goal and something that I dreamt of as a little kid because, you know, when I went – when I was a little kid, I was used to go to some games and it was like, oh, wow, this is like – these guys are great. And, you know, the culture of the teams and the rinks and all that, it was so cool. And, you know, it's kind of – kind of cool to think about how you know i'm getting drafted to such a great league and you know we're so, a league that i was uh you know hoping to be playing in when i was younger and a dream that uh, definitely came true today so yeah welcome to the whl and congratulations riley boychuk the second overall selection in the 2023 whl prospects draft well, the Spokane Chiefs are on the clock right now, but boy, has that ever been an exciting uh, few minutes for the Prince Albert Raiders and uh, what, a, what a future they have in store. I mean, you look at the last few years, uh, certainly an exciting uh, a group of young prospects uh, that we've seen through Ryder Ritchie and more. Uh, even this season manifesting itself. The Spokane Chiefs are on the clock at number three, and in fact, the pick is in at number three. So let's go to Spokane right now. The general manager of the Chiefs, Matt Bardsley, is standing by to announce the third overall selection. The Spokane Chiefs organization would like to congratulate the Seattle Thunderbirds and the Winnipeg Ice for reaching the Western Hockey League finals and wish them all the best in their pursuit of uh, representing the Western Hockey League in the Memorial Cup. We'd also like to congratulate and wish all the best of luck to the Kamloops Blazers. We know that they'll be great, great hosts off the ice and on the ice as well. Uh, with that, Spokane Chiefs are very honored and excited to select from Penticton, British Columbia, from the OHA Prep U15 team, center Mathis Preston. Well, a great pick here for the Spokane Chiefs. We talked about Preston off the top of the show, Chris. This is a commanding forward. Every time he's on the ice, you notice Mathis Preston. He brings a presence to the ice that's unmatched in this draft class. His best weapon is his shot, and we saw that with the 45 goals in 26 games this year for OHA. He's got a dangerous, heavy shot. He gets it off from all over the ice and also has a nose for the net as well. He can score in the crease. Uh, he can score on breakaways. Really gives it to you whatever way you want. And uh, this is a very, very dangerous offensive player that uh, when you with the likes of you know recent draft picks like Berkeley Catton who are starting to produce for the Spokane Chiefs this is a very dangerous forward core that this team's building up Chris and we expect great things from Mathis Preston coming forward 
81 points, 45 of them goals in just 26 games with OHA Penticton of the CSSHL. Let's go back to Spokane now. A general manager, Matt Bardsley, standing by. Matt, congratulations on, on this selection and welcoming Mathis Preston into the fold in Spokane. Uh, congratulations as well uh, for the selection yesterday of Brody Gillespie, first overall in the U.S. Priority Draft. But let's talk about Mathis uh, first of all. Uh, tell me about this player and how excited you guys are to welcome him to Spokane. Yeah, we're really, we're extremely excited. Uh, Mathis is, is an elite player, explosive skater, uh, hard to contain off, off the rush, um, has an elite level shot, um, can score off the rush, uh, can, can one-time pucks. Uh, he's, he's a game changer. I mean, he can break games open. Uh, what I love about him too is he's so driven. He's focused. He wants to be the best. He expects the best out of himself, his teammates, everybody. Uh, the type of player that uh, is going to be really exciting and, and the fans are going to be really excited to see him over the next three, four, five years uh, in Spokane. And with the great group of, uh, of young prospects that we have and also our veteran returning players, uh, we're really excited to be able to select Mathis. I was going to say, Matt, it seems... Uh strange a little bit to refer to Berkeley Catton now as a veteran at the, you know, going into his 17-year-old season next year. But, boy, he uh, certainly, as far as this 05, 06, 07, 08 age group is concerned, I mean, you've you've got Catton, uh, Harrington, and now Preston just as, as three top-tier uh, uh, offensive talents to be able to, to trot out in front of the fans in Spokane. I mean, uh, a message from you to fans, I guess, just, just uh, the excitement level to, uh, that, that people should have in Spokane for, for what's to come. Yeah, no, we're really excited, and you're right. I think with, with someone like a Berkeley and, and, and certainly Chase Harrington and, and now someone like Mathis and even Brody, who we selected yesterday, uh, along with the other group of forwards and, and defense and just our, our young prospects, and again, and even some of our, our returning veteran players, the 18, 19, 20-year-olds, I think the fans are going to be really excited. Uh, the brand that we put out on the ice is going to be fast-paced, energetic, and uh, we're really excited to, to see where we're going to be able to go over the next two, three years with this group. Matt, thank you very much for this. Appreciate this and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Great. Thank you. Matt Bardsley, general manager of the Spokane Chiefs. And boy, Mathis Preston, I mean, the, the numbers jump off the page, Taylor. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, certainly an exciting pick for Spokane. And, and you look for that team to, to really possess a, a high octane offense here uh, in years to come. The Victoria Royals. Hold the number four pick in the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. They are the first team from the BC Division to have a selection today. That pick is in at number four. The Assistant General Manager and Director of Player Personnel in Victoria is J.F. Best. We will go there now for the announcement of the fourth overall pick. Thanks, Chris. The Victoria Royals are proud to select out of Fort Saskatchewan and Rink Kelowna U15 Prep. Defenseman Keaton Fairhoff. Well, the big rangy Fort Saskatchewan, Fort Saskatchewan defenseman off the board at four to Victoria. This is a very, very good player. Another player that excels in all three zones of the ice. Uh, actually led the CSSHL in D-man points per game this year. Uh, you know, we see a lot of, uh, you know, when I see Seth Jones play, a former Winterhawk defenseman, I see a lot of comparisons to Keaton Verhoff in his game. Just a capable player, a good skater. At 6'3 already, he's going to be a big player too, room to grow still from there. He passes the puck extremely well, very calm game, he never seems in trouble. And offensively, he has excellent instincts as well, very good IQ in the zone, can run a power play. This is a potential franchise defenseman for the Victoria Royals and they'll be very excited to get him at number four, Chris. Cole Reshny, number three overall last year. Keaton Verhoff, number four overall this year. Let's go back to Victoria. JF Best joining us now. Uh, JF, tell me about the player and, and just, you know, the level of excitement in Victoria uh, today to be able to add Keaton to your team. Yeah, Chris, the level of excitement is very high here. We are thrilled to be able to add Keaton. Uh, first and foremost, he's an outstanding person. He's got a high character, great work rate on the ice, off the ice. He is, uh, like you mentioned, uh, going to be a pillar as part of this uh, young core of prospects that we've uh, been putting together. Certainly seems like a, a mobile defenseman as well, and that's uh, certainly a trend that we see in the game nowadays. I mean, just speak to his his ability to to excel in all areas of the ice. Yeah, for sure. He's the type of player that can uh, change the landscape very quickly. He's got dynamic ability. He's very powerful. He's very creative with the puck 
off the puck. He's very imposing down low around the nets. Uh, he leads by example. He plays a hard, uh, hard game in all areas of the ice. So we we're very, very excited to see him develop in Victoria over the years to come. We're excited to see that as well, JF. Thanks very much for this and uh, best of luck the rest of the day today. Thanks, guys. Keaton Verhoff, number four overall to the Victoria Royals. Taylor, that's three Albertans in the top four here in the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. The picks continue to roll in. The Brandon Wheat Kings are at number five overall. They are on the clock. The pick is in. Let's go now to Brandon. The director of hockey operations is Chris Moulton of the Wheat Kings in the uh, Brandon uh, War Room, the draft room there. Let's go now to Brandon for the announcement of the fifth overall pick. The Brandon Wheat Kings are very proud to select with the fifth overall selection from the Brandon U18 team, Jackson Jacobson. Well, one of the most dynamic players in the draft goes off the board to Brandon at five Jackson Jacobson a local product which will make him and the team happy again one of the few players to be drafted or to be uh, granted U18 status this year meaning he played up against stronger players this is an excellent excellent player very good skater quick shifty can create offense uh, out of nothing uh, and really you know dynamic abilities in the zone he's very good on his edges creates time and space finds passing lanes you know he's capable as a shooter as a passer uh, really just an offensive creator for Brandon and somebody that's going to be able to drive play uh, at an extremely high rate. This is an excellent selection for the Brandon Wheat Kings. Thank you, Taylor Green, for that REMAX report. The Brandon Wheat Kings go local, and boy, you look down the line of Brandonites who have worn that Wheat King sweater over the years. Most recently, Nolan Ritchie, of course, a, a graduate this season, but the list goes on and on. And Jackson Jacobson, uh, the newest uh, member of that Brandon organization to hail from the Wheat City. Let's go back to Brandon now. Uh, Chris Moulton is standing by. Uh, Chris, uh, congratulations to yourself and to the Wheat Kings organization for this selection. Uh, tell me a little bit about Jackson and, and what he brings to the fold, the excitement level uh, that you guys have in welcoming him to the Wheat Kings today? Well, it's an exciting day when you can uh, welcome a player of Jackson's caliber. Um, Jackson's a special player for us. He uh, has incredible vision. He's an ultimate competitor and on top of everything is a leader and a great human being. So we're, uh, we're excited to get him in our lineup in the next little while here. And he's, he just makes our club better uh, both on and off the ice. You know, as Taylor mentioned, uh, a, a player that played up this year at the U18 level and, and produced 60 points in 44 games. Uh, how much does that speak, uh, uh, Chris, to his character and, and his ability to, to maybe handle, handle additional pressure, additional challenges? We're talking about a very young player competing with players that were much older, and he handled himself very well and was one of the elite players in the league. So there's no question when, when Jackson is tested at higher level, levels, he, he, he does very well. So he, um, he just has the ability, his, his brains, the way he thinks, and his maturity allows him to play the game at a very high level. Chris, thank you for this. Congratulations, and best of luck the rest of the day. Thank you. Chris Moulton for the Brandon Wheat Kings as the club selects Jackson Jacobson, fifth overall in the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. The Prospects Draft in today's live broadcast is brought to you by Kia, Kubota Canada, the real Canadian superstore, and Remax. Recapping the top five selections, of course, it was Daxon Rudolph, the defenseman from Lacombe, Alberta, going first overall to the Prince Albert Raiders. Followed that up at number two with Riley Boychuk, forward from Cochrane. Third overall, the Spokane Chiefs selected BC forward Mathis Preston. At number four, Keaton Verhoff, a defenseman from Fort Saskatchewan, Alberta, goes to the Victoria Royals. And most recently, now Jackson Jacobson at number five to the Brandon Wheat Kings. The Vancouver Giants are on the clock, and they have two selections here at number six and at number eight. And as we uh, continue to scan around the, uh, the board here in uh, Vancouver, the Zoom call, we don't believe we have the Giants uh, on the line at this time. So we will... Uh, Rag the puck here, as they say in radio terms and penalty killing terms here. Uh, Taylor, I mean, just recapping some of these top five picks, uh, just, you know, tell me a little bit about, you know, what what you've seen so far. Uh, has has this first five picks maybe gone 
kind of the way you've expected in terms of some of the players that you've gotten to see over the course of the year? Yeah, I think it has, Chris. I think we're seeing those high-end players uh, ranked at the top of the draft go early here. You know, I think Prince Albert's two selections, again, we talked about how they, they pair well with each other and with that young core that they're building and Rudolph and Boychuk, uh, two players with dynamic abilities. Uh, obviously, Boychuk being the offensive creator there and Rudolph being the stalwart on the back end. You know, when we look at three at Mathis Preston, I think this is a player that we expected to go high in the draft. And Matt Bardsley said it best that he has, you know, a commanding presence on the ice, a high octane offensive player uh, that we expect to produce big numbers for the Chiefs going forward when paired with players like Harrington and like Berkeley Catton. Uh, you know, number four, Keaton Verhoff, big, capable defenseman, can really do it all. And JF Best touched on his leadership ability as well. This is a high character player, uh, can drag his teammates into the fight and projects as an excellent player going forward. Uh, and then Jackson Jacobson and Brandon, too, the local product. We always like to see those hometown ties. Uh, Chris Moulton, Marty Murray, and their staff will be very excited to have him into the fold, really bringing that dynamic offensive punch uh, that maybe they were missing in their prospect pool beforehand. And so a very exciting draft for the top five so far. We're looking forward to see what, uh, what Vancouver does here shortly. The WHL scholarship is Western Canada's premier Hockey scholarship, Taylor Green, you can attest to that, and you did prior to the start of the show. Uh, for each year, a WHL player plays in the league. They receive tuition, textbooks at the university of their choice. The WHL scholarship saw 364 players access it uh, this year over the course of the 2022-23 season, representing an investment of $2.4 million. The draft is rolling along. And as we go, the Vancouver Giants have made their pick at number six. And we can tell you now that the Barkley Parnetta and the Vancouver Giants have joined the call. They are just in the nick of time. And we will go now to uh, Vancouver for the announcement of the sixth overall pick in the WHL Prospects Draft. Go ahead, Barkley. Well, we'll wait for uh, Barkley here. He sounds like he's got some audio issues. Uh, we will uh, continue to await that to, to be sorted out here. Uh, but the Vancouver Giants at number six and number eight in this draft. Uh, a very exciting day for them as well. We've talked a lot about Prince Albert, but we haven't really talked about the Vancouver Giants uh, uh, very much in terms of you know the, the players that they hope to choose here in the uh, 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. Uh, this uh, team, of course, getting this sixth overall pick in a deal last year at this time with the Swift Current Broncos. Uh, we'll go back to Vancouver now uh, to Barclay Parnetta with the announcement of the sixth overall pick. Vancouver Giants, enjoy the call there just in the nick of time. We will go now to uh, Vancouver. Are we in Vancouver? I hope so. If you're on. Hello. The volume up. There, up here. On the TV, maybe works. Oh, oh, okay. Hey, how about now? Are we here now? We got you, Barkley, loud and clear. Uh Sorry, guys, I had my uh, computer uh, tied into the TV here, and the, it's muted. So, uh, the magic I, I of live television. Yeah, good stuff. The sixth overall pick belongs to you, Barclay. Go ahead and make your announcement. Uh, the Vancouver Giants are proud to select from the Delta Ice Hockey Academy, Ryan Lynn. Well, a fantastic pick here at six for the Vancouver Giants. Ryan Lynn is probably the most dynamic defenseman in this draft class. And when we look at Ryan Lynn, we look at his skating ability first. He's got a long stride, a very quick, powerful edge, edge work as well. This is a player that can get up and down the ice in a hurry, allowing him to join the rush, uh, you know, take offensive risks, which we see paid off in his 41 points in 27 games this year with Delta. He also has the ability to get back in the play and it allows him to play more of a dynamic game, a game where he can wheel around and get below the dots create offense for his teammates. This is a very, very dangerous player in the offensive zone and someone who defends in a smart way, Chris, with his feet, with his stick, rarely out of position. An excellent, excellent pick here for the Giants at six. 
The Vancouver Giants have had a long history of selecting players from the Delta Hockey Academy. Ryan Lynn, a defenseman, is the newest uh, member of that fold. Barkley Parnetta joining us uh, now back from the Giants draft room. Barkley, Ryan Lynn, the newest member of your club. Tell me about the player. Uh, how excited are you to, to add to the, the stable of, of Delta Hockey Academy products in the Giants organization? Well, obviously Delta being right in our backyard is an area that we're able to watch these kids a lot. We got, and we got to watch Ryan grow as a player, even as a first year. Um, you know, Terry Bonner uh, is our head scout. He lives out here. Daryl Lanning and Kelly Kirsteiner, the viewings are high. Uh, you know, it sounded like Taylor was in our draft meetings with the uh, analysis he made of Ryan, because certainly those are all the things that we think he is. We we really think we've got a special player here. Uh, we're thoroughly excited that we had, we're able to pick him. And you know what? We're, Really excited to watch him grow and help him become the best player he can be. It's really a good day for the Vancouver Giants. And a good day that isn't even close to being over, Barkley. We know you're at number eight uh, pretty quick here coming up, so we'll let you get back to uh, the draft table, but we'll talk to you again soon. Yeah, and I won't leave the Zoom, so I'll be ready next time. We're ready. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, Barkley. Ryan Lynn, sixth overall to the Vancouver Giants. Uh, back to Prince Albert, number seven. The third pick of the first round for the Prince Albert Raiders, and the pick is in. So we will, without further ado, uh, go back to Hockey Town North. Bruno Zerillo, it's been a busy morning of conversation between you and I, sir, but happy to do it as always. The seventh overall pick belongs to you. I invite you to make that selection. Yeah, thanks. And uh, the Prince Albert Raiders are excited to take from St. Albert, Ty Munier. Well, another dynamic offensive player here for the Prince Albert Raiders, the undisputed king of goals in the AEHL this season, Chris. Munier had the most goals in the league by, by 20 goals, scoring 54 in 32 games, and that really speaks for itself. This is a very, very dangerous player in the offensive zone. His shot is elite, one of the best in the draft class. He gets it off very quickly with that modern release that we see Connor Bedard and Austin Matthews use where they pull it into their body and snap it through. This is a player that can score in every way possible as well. He has a nose for the net. His stick is like a magnet for the puck in the offensive zone. It follows him around, making him very, very dangerous. He's capable to create for his teammates, but certainly this is a player that looks to score Chris, and we expect him to fill the net in future years for the Prince Albert Raiders. So Ty Mounier from uh, St. Albert, Alberta, is the seventh overall selection here in the WHL Prospects Draft. Let's go back to uh, Bruno Zerillo in Prince Albert. Had a bit of an earpiece malfunction there, but we're back up and running. Uh, Bruno, tell me about Ty Mounier. And again, I mean, the third selection for your club in the top seven, but Mounier, uh, at least on paper and from Taylor's uh, eye viewing, uh, checks out as a, a pretty legitimate offensive threat. How excited are you guys to have him? No, we're very excited. I think, you know, like 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 what he was described. Like I think he is one of the top top goal scorers, pure shooters in the draft, and he'll he'll fit very well with what we've what we've taken so far and what we have. And he's a dynamic player. He's exciting to watch. And uh, no, we're we're just elated to have him. Again, to recap, uh, Bruno, three selections for your club, uh, you know, in, in the top seven here in the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. Uh, I'll give you an opportunity to, to speak to the fans in Prince Albert and, and just speak to your excitement level and, and just the excitement level that the fans in Prince Albert should have as well about, you know, the, the, the group that your group is putting together here on the ice. No, I think... This has been like, I think it's like, obviously we won the lotto, which is, you know, to tell you what kind of year we've had and to get one, two and seven, you know, this just doesn't happen. And to, to be able to do this after winning the championship a few years ago and to, to, re, to continue to build on that and to build on going into a new arena, there's just so much excitement and, and getting three players of the quality we have is, is just I, it's just too much to ask for, you know. Like to, to you know, to have to pinch yourself to be to get back to reality. And um, no, it's yeah, we're, it's it's crazy. But um, we're is we're looking forward to September. We are too. I mean, we've got a few months to go and a few events to cover, but uh, the new season is certainly top of mind for us as well. We appreciate you doing this, Bruno. Congratulations again, and, and best of luck the rest of the day. Thank you very much. Prince Albert Raiders, seventh overall, select Ty Mounier from uh, the, uh, the St. Albert uh, Sabres U15 club in the AEHL. Here's a look at uh, where we're at as far as the top seven selections in the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. The eighth pick is in, 
It belongs to the Vancouver Giants, who selected defenseman Ryan Lynn at number six. So let's go back to Vancouver now. Barkley Parnetta joining us again. The eighth overall pick is yours, Barkley. Tim, please go ahead and make the announcement. Uh, the Vancouver Giants are proud to elect from St. Albert, Alberta, Brett Olson. Well, an absolute horse of a two-way centerman goes to Vancouver here at eight, and this is another excellent pick by the Vancouver Giants. 6'2 forward already who played at St. Albert this year, and one of the only, he was the only player in Alberta to be granted U18 status this year, Chris. Uh, you know, this is a two-way guy that can do a little bit of everything for the Vancouver Giants. He can win face-offs. He can kill penalties. He's gritty. He's extremely high character, someone I'm sure they're looking at as a potential captain down the road as well. When you pair this with their three forwards for pick, first-round picks last year, you saw a lot of skill last year, Chris. Brett Olson has skill, but he's also going to bring an element of play driving, quickness. I look at Dylan Cousins, a former Lethbridge Hurricane, obviously who's had success in the NHL and see a lot of similarities there just in a, you know, dynamic two-way ability, someone that can drive play. An excellent pick here at eight for Vancouver. Boy, the name that jumps off the page to me right now was a first round pick from St. Albert, Alberta that the Giants made in 2018. And that is Zach Ostopchuk. I mean, it just, the seems like a similar type of player, but we'll, uh, we'll get the analysis from the general manager himself, Barkley Parnetta from the Giants, uh, joining us now. Brett Olson uh, from St. Albert, Alberta, your eighth overall selection. Barkley, tell me a bit about the player and how excited you are to add him to your complement of prospects. Well, honestly, we're, we're extremely thrilled. This was not a player, and I know people say this all the time, but you know he played on the Canada Winter Games team for Team Alberta as an underage uh, he really wasn't somebody that we saw uh, being available to us at this point. So uh, having the ability to pick him, it was a no-brainer. The, the, the good com analogy comparison with Zach Ostapchuk, a, a lot of similarities in their game. Uh, this kid, he knows where to go and how to play the game. He gets to the hard areas. He has skill. There's just a lot of the identity and, and core values that we have, he certainly has shown to us through the course of the year, and we think he's going to be a great Vancouver Giant. Speak to me, if you would, uh, Barkley. Of course, uh, two first-round picks this year for your group, three first-round picks last year, uh, of course, in the 2022 WHL Prospects Draft. Uh, just share your thoughts and what Giants fans should expect down the line just from this group that you have coming up uh, into the system. Well, it sounds terrific with all these picks, but obviously uh, when you're doing things like that, there's things that you have to do by trading our two captains in the last two years that you don't really want to do. So this is the light at the end of the tunnel, and... I think the fans are going to see a, a, a crop of exceptional players that are, are playing together uh, when you're picking kids this high. I really think that it's a really strong foundation to add to what we have now, not only right away, but in the future, it really sets us up well for success. Barclay, thank you very much for doing this. We appreciate your time and uh, best of luck the rest of the day. Thanks, guys. Great job. Barkley Parnetta from the Vancouver Giants uh, after they select Brett Olson, eighth overall. And uh, boy, uh, he said it as well, the comparisons to Zach Kostopchuk, who, of course, we'll see tomorrow when the 2023 WHL Championship Series presented by New Trade begins in Winnipeg. It's a 6 p.m. Mountain Time a start, game one, between the Ice and the Thunderbirds tomorrow night on WHL Live. And, of course, uh, pick, uh, games three through seven of that series uh, will be broadcast nationally on TSN as part of TSN's continuing coverage of the Western Hockey League. The Medicine Hat Tigers have the ninth overall pick in the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. They have submitted their selection. Uh, so let's go now to Medicine Hat, where the Tigers Director of Player Personnel, Bobby Fox, is standing by to make the ninth overall pick in the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. Thanks, guys. Uh, the Mess and Hat Tigers are very pleased to select with our number nine overall pick from the Okanagan Hockey Academy, Liam Ruck. Well, an excellent pick here for the Medicine Hat Tigers and Liam Ruck from a Soyuz BC OHA Penticton product this year in the U15 level. Led the CSSHL in points with 90 points this year. Just an explosive offensive player. 53 goals in the regular season as well. Uh, that was good for first in the CSSHL as well. And you see the dynamic ability in his shot when you watch him play. This is a player that gets the puck off very quickly, very accurately. Slings it kind of like Nikita Kucherov, Chris, in the way that he shoots with a high skill release that's very, very accurate. Quite simply, this is an extremely dangerous offensive player with high-end 
IQ. Uh, one of two twins in the draft as well. His brother Marcus Ruck, we'll hear his name called shortly as well. Uh, and, you know, they played on a line together. The twin connection was excellent for the two of them, but Liam is an extremely dynamic player that will really help the Medicine Hat Tigers. Total of 90 points in 27 games with OHA Penticton of the CSSHL. Liam Ruck from Osoyoos, BC. Let's go back to Medicine Hat. Bobby Fox is standing by. Bobby, boy, uh, another skilled forward that, uh, you know, you look at the likes of Caden Lindstrom and Thomas Mercik, uh, who we saw this year as 16-year-old players. Uh, now you go back to the forward core again and, and add Liam Ruck. Tell me about the player. How excited are you guys to have him as a Medicine Hat Tiger? Uh, to have Liam part of our prospect pool here, he's a he's an exciting goal scorer, uh, dynamic. The the one thing that you know you can't discount here, this guy is one of the smartest players in the draft. He has a knack for the net, and he he knows how to score, and he wants that puck on his stick when the game's on the line. It certainly seems to me, I mean, we saw it manifest itself this year. Of course, the Tigers qualifying for the WHL playoffs, but playing an up-tempo style of game and, and an exciting style of game in Medicine Hat, uh, uh, this player certainly seems like uh, uh, he'll, he'll follow along in that suit of, of players that you brought in. Just speak to just the overall vision you guys have as an organization and in, in, in pushing the pace again in Medicine Hat. Yeah, no, we want to play. We want to play fast, and uh, we like to score goals, and that's what Liam does, so it's a no-brainer for us. Bobby, appreciate you doing this. Uh, congratulations on the pick and best of luck the rest of the day. Appreciate it. Thank you. Liam Ruck, ninth overall to the Medicine Hat Tigers. The picks continue to come in. The Everett Silver Tips will round out the top 10 uh, here on this uh, WHL Prospects Draft first round live coverage. Now, Everett uh, picked 20th overall in each of the last two years, uh, taking defenseman Taryn Smith and forward Julian Mays in each of the past two first rounds. They go number 10 here today. The pick is in. Let's go to Everett. Assistant General Manager Mike Fraser standing by to make the selection at number 10. With the 10th overall selection, the Everett Silver Tips are proud to select from Bozager, Manitoba, and NAX Academy, defenseman Breck Liskey. Well, Breck Liskey, an excellent pick here for the Everett Silver Tips. Another big two-way defender, played on the same, same team as Dax and Rudolph Chris, and they, they took time playing together, took time playing apart. When Breck played apart from Dax and Rudolph, he can really steady a defense pair on his own. We see dynamic ability with him as well, mostly in transition as a player that can really move the puck. Uh, you know, he's a capable offensive player, and as a defender, he's excellent. Very, very smart, physical. He has a big frame, which he uses to lean on players. Uh, quick feet as well. This is a player that can do a little bit of everything for the Everett Silver Tips, and when we look at a modern defenseman, you know he's already six one. He moves well. He moves the puck well. He's going to give every Everett everything they need out of a modern top pair defenseman. Over a point a game at the U15 uh, level and the Canadian Sports School Hockey League. Breck Liskey from Manitoba, and boy, following as you see on the, in the lines of you know, the likes of Ronan Seeley, Olin Zellweger, who wasn't a first round pick by Everett, but was a big part of that organization uh, for a number of years as well. Thank you, Taylor, for that Remax report. Let's go back to Everett now. Mike Fraser is standing by. Mike, uh, congratulations on the pick of Breck Liskey at number 10. Tell me about the player, uh, the excitement level from the Silver Tips to be able to get him 10th overall. Yeah, we're very excited to, to get Breck at number 10. Uh, I think he really checks all the boxes for us. Uh, really good, solid all-around defenseman. Uh, I really thought he take a, took a big step in the second half of the season. And uh, really impressed with him, uh, you know, in Penticton at the CSSHL Championships, and and again in Manitoba there in early April. So I think he'll fit uh, he'll fit into our group quite nicely. Uh, tell me a little bit about you know uh, the the group you have overall in terms of, of prospects in the fold. I mean, how he fits in, and, and and how excited you are about the group that you'll be able to bring to training camp in September. Well, we, we've probably got, you know, a few more draft picks and assets than we've had for a few years. Uh, so, you know, I think he, he fits into a good group here moving forward. Uh, we're really happy with the uh, 2007 draft that we had, uh, having a bunch of those players signed and, and uh, being able to add Breck uh, into that group. And, and, you know, the amount of picks coming up here over the next few years, uh, I think he's set up quite nicely for us moving forward. Mike, thank you for this. Congratulations on the pick and best of luck the rest of the day. Thanks, guys.
So Breck Liskey joins uh, the likes of uh, uh, Julian Mays, who we talked about, Lucas Kaplan, who was an MVP at the Canadian Sports School level as well um, a year ago, or this season, I should say, in uh, 2023. Ten picks are in the books, which means we are almost halfway through the first round of the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. Taylor Green uh, recapping again, Daxon Rudolph, Riley Boychuk, first and second overall to the Prince Albert Raiders. Uh, the Raiders uh, picking one, two, and seven in this first round at number seven. They take forward Ty Mounier. Third overall was uh, Mathis Preston going to the Spokane Chiefs, while Keaton Verhoff, uh, the defenseman, fourth overall to the Victoria Royals. Rounding out the top five was the local product for the Brandon Wheat Kings, Jackson Jacobson. Uh, Vancouver selecting Delta Hockey Academy defenseman Ryan Lynn at number seven, and then grabbing forward Brett Olson from uh, Alberta at number eight. Liam Ruck, a Soyuz BC. The family might have to uh, to make a bit of a, a, an adjustment here. The father, Derek, played for the Lethbridge Hurricanes as a WHLer, but he goes to their Highway 3 rivals, the Medicine Hat Tigers, at number nine, and Breck Liskey rounding out the top ten here, going tenth overall to the Everett Silver Tips. The Calgary Hitmen are on the clock here at number 11. We await their pick, Taylor Green. Uh, you know, when you look at the Calgary Hitmen, uh, this is a group that, that certainly has, has benefited from some pretty quality first-round selections in recent years. Uh, you know, just tell me about the organization and, and, and who you who you like to see from there. Yeah, well, obviously they've done a great job in the last few years. You look at Reese Hamilton most recently. You see Carson Wetch, Oliver Tulk, players that are starting to contribute for this organization already. You know, this is a this is an organization that loves skilled players. Uh, you know, I know they want to get more dynamic here, so very curious to see what Jeff Chenoweth, Gary Davidson, and their staff do with this pick. Gary Davidson is standing by in Calgary. The pick is in at number 11. Uh, let's go now to Hitman headquarters for the 11th overall pick. Gary, sounds like you're muted. The 11th overall pick uh, belonging to the Hitmen here. Sounds like we're just uh, dealing with a couple of audio issues uh, here in the, uh, the Calgary uh, draft room uh, with respect to uh, the, the audio levels there. But uh, the Hitmen uh, certainly uh, waiting and, and anxious to make this pick at number 11. Uh, uh, certainly, you know, the opportunity to add, as you said, another impact player uh, uh, along the lines of, of, of Reese Hamilton, uh, you know, Graydon Seatman uh, of a few years ago, uh, Sean Chagall, a former fourth overall Hello. pick, uh, who was, of course, drafted by the Anaheim Ducks. Let's go back to Calgary now. Gary Davidson is standing by at number 11. Sorry, gentlemen, you can hear me now? We are loud and clear. Very good. Again, uh, we're on a mission to find some more talent here, so we're very excited with our first pick in the 2023 draft. We're selecting uh, Noah Kosick from Pacific Coast Hockey Academy, U18 Preps. Uh, Noah's, an, uh, Noah's an outstanding talent uh, with that group. Excellent, excellent pick here by the Calgary Hitman. Noah Kosick from Victoria, BC, the last player in this draft class to be granted U18 status and the only one from British Columbia. 45 points in 32 games at that level, showing that he can handle a game against older, stronger players. And this, is, this might be the most skilled player in the draft class, Chris. He truly is a wizard with the puck. Stick skills are off the charts. Someone that, uh, you know, excels not only at creating time and space for, for his teammates, but really for himself. He's a crafty player. You see cutbacks on the half wall. You see uh, you know, dynamic ability, entering the zone, opening up passing lanes. This is a guy that loves to dish. Probably the best natural uh, power play half wall player in the draft too. We had the chance to see him at BC Cup and he was, uh, again, a very dynamic player. Someone that'll bring a lot of offensive punch for the Calgary Hitmen. Noah Kosick uh, listed as being born in Germany, but raised in Victoria. His father, Mark, uh, was a professional player overseas for a number of years. Let's go back to Calgary now. Gary Davidson is standing by uh, uh, following the selection of Noah Kosick, 11th overall in the draft. Uh, Gary, this, this uh, young man oozes skill. Uh, tell me a bit about the player. How excited are the Calgary Hitmen to have Noah Kosick in the fold? Um, we're very excited. We discussed this at great lengths again yesterday. Uh, uh, if Noah was available at 11, and it became very, very obviously our group was very excited about being able to select him if he was there. Uh, I had the good fortune of actually coaching his dad many, many years ago in the BC Hockey League. So I've had a good relationship, not only uh, 
with the, Noah's grandfather many years ago, and Mark is, is now his coach. Uh, but again, uh, th th this young man, I think, is going to be an exceptional high scorer in the Western Hockey League here in the very near future. And again, uh, he's got exceptional hockey sense, exceptional, and his hands are exceptional. And uh, can't wait to see him on the ice for us in the near future here. That makes two of us, well, three of us, if you count Greener to my uh, left over here as well, Gary. Thanks very much for doing this. Congratulations on the pick and best of luck the rest of the day. No, thanks very much, gentlemen. Noah Kosick, 11th overall to the Calgary Hitmen. Their provincial rivals from Edmonton are on the clock at number 12. This is a pick that Edmonton uh, acquired from the Regina Pats. Uh, in uh, earlier uh, this year, uh, the Oil Kings picking 12th overall. Uh, they are on the clock. They have a selection uh, that we believe uh, is uh, in the works here in terms of being uh, getting ready to be made. Uh, the Oil Kings, though, a group that you know made a made a big splash yesterday at the U.S. Priority Draft, uh, selecting a defenseman Noah Taamu, a third overall uh, from San Diego, and, and, and actually already signing him to a WHL scholarship and development agreement. Uh, Noah Taamu uh, from the LA Junior Kings uh, uh, projects to be a big part of that defense uh, and another American player uh, to bring into the Edmonton fold. Uh, you know, it, it's it's an exciting time for Edmonton, of course, a year removed from the WHL championship and, and now getting to restock the cupboards. Yeah, I think so, Chris. They've done an excellent job of, uh, you know, doing a quick re tool here after their uh, nice run to the championships uh, years past and uh, yeah we're seeing excellent prospects come into the fold here for them Noah Tam who obviously a dynamic big player uh, that projects as an excellent defenseman going down the line and uh, you know some great players on the board here for them to choose from at 12 we'll see what they end up doing the Oil Kings uh, of course have a couple of players in the NHL draft radar as well in forwards Cole Miller uh, forward Cole Miller and defenseman uh, Voita Port who they of course acquired from the Red Deer Rebels at the start of the season as well the Edmonton Oil Kings are standing by. We will go now to Edmonton, where Director of Scouting Michael Chan is at the podium, ready to make the 12th overall selection. The Edmonton Oil Kings are proud to select from Rink Hockey Academy, Kelowna, Joe Aginla. Well, one of the speediest forwards in the draft goes off the board, Joe Aginla. WHL fans will recognize this name, of course, his father Jerome, a longtime Kamloops Blazer with a successful NHL career, and his brother Teej currently playing for the Seattle Thunderbirds on road to a WHL championship berth. Uh, you know, this is an excellent player, uh, a lot of pace, wins a lot of battles as well. He's a gritty, competitive player. The puck seems to follow him around in the offensive zone. When we look at Joe, we really see the shot here. 37 goals in 27 games. He can score around the net, but that shot, that wrister that he can get off uh, is a dynamic shooter. Uh, and we expect him to fill the net here for Edmonton in, in the upcoming years. Joe Aginla, teammates with the first two selections in yesterday's U.S. draft uh, uh, by the Spokane Chiefs and the Victoria Royals, uh, Waltzy and um, uh, Gillespie, who went to Spokane first overall as well. Uh, but Joe Aginla, the newest member of the Edmonton Oil Kings. Let's go back to Edmonton now. Michael Chan, the director of scouting, uh, joining us. Uh, Michael, uh, it's it's been a great couple of days for your group. Uh, first with adding uh, Noah Taamu yesterday, third overall in the U.S. priority draft. Now you get Joe Aginla at number 12 in the WHL prospects draft. Tell me uh, what what excites your group about the player and, and how happy you are to to add him to the Oil Kings organization. Yeah, we're, we're very excited to be adding Joe to our organization. Um, we think he possesses a pretty unique blend of offensive patience and assertiveness. Um, he pushes the pace of the game and, and loves to shoot the puck. But I think more importantly for us beyond the skill set is the winning attitude he brings to the, the rink. And, and uh, he loves to get in the hard areas and he's willing to do whatever it takes to win. Obviously, you know, the, the connections with the family as well. Uh, there, there's certainly the name brand with, with Jerome, of course, having played in the league and, and an older brother Tej uh, playing uh, with uh, the Seattle Thunderbirds right now. But, I mean, uh, it's certainly, you look beyond the name and you look at the player, uh, just, you know, this, this player certainly looks like just a, a marquee addition to your group. No, we appreciate that. And, uh, there's obviously the family background, but it's important for us and, and the way we view things is that Joe stands alone as his own player and uh, 
he's going to develop as his own player and we're we're really excited to to get him in here and get him working with with our staff as soon as possible busy day for your organization busy couple of days of course with uh, yesterday as well michael thank you very much for taking the time today appreciate this and uh, best of luck enjoy the rest of the day too thank you michael chan from the edmonton oil kings after edmonton selects joe aginla uh, 12th overall in the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. Uh, back to the U.S. division we go. At number 13, it is the Tri-City Americans. Uh, the Americans, uh, of course, uh, re-qualifying -re for the playoffs this year and, and an exciting group in Tri-City as well. Uh, you know, you look at uh, uh, the likes of, uh, of of Lucas Dragasevic, who is certain to uh, hear his name called at the end of June in the NHL draft. Uh, uh, you know, just a part of a, a gr good group of young players um, in terms of, you know, the players they've selected recently, Jackson Smith, second overall last year uh, as well as Jordan Gavin second overall the year before uh, they're at 13 today and the Tri-City Americans have uh, made their selection or they are about to I should say the pick is in uh, we will go now to the Tri-Cities assistant general manager Roy Stasiak is standing by Roy please go ahead and announce the 13th overall pick in the WHL prospects draft Tri-City Americans are very proud and happy to uh, select from Calgary Edge Academy August 24th 2008 Cruz Paveo. Well, Cruz Paveo, a hard-nosed forward, one of my favorite players in this draft class, Chris. Uh, you know, 5'10 forward from Edge Academy with 67 points this year in 23 games played in the Canadian Sports School Hockey League. He was fourth in goals as well with 32. Another player going off the board here that just knows how to score. Uh, along with the wrist shot ability and, and you know, the one-timing ability, this is a player that does score goals by going hard to the paint. He plays on the inside of the ice between the dots, coaches will say, which, you know, is, is hard to find in young players. He plays a hard-nosed game. He can play physical and an emotional leader for his group too at Edge, a player that can really drag his teammates into the fight, plays with a lot of will. This is a high competitive player, a highly spirited player. Really looking forward to the entertainment value we're going to get from him in Tri-Cities, Chris. Thank you, Taylor, for that Remax report as Cruz Paveo goes 13th overall to the Tri-City Americans. Second year in a row, by the way, that the Americans go to the Edge School for a first-round selection after Jackson Smith a year ago. Roy Stasiak, the assistant GM of the Americans, joining us now. Roy, Cruz Paveo, a skilled forward, joining your group, a group that has some skilled forwards in the fold, but you add one more here at 13. Tell me about the player and how excited you are to add Cruz to your group. Well, I was just telling uh, Bob Torrey, I feel a little bit like Kyle Davidson with Chicago. I'm a little shocked and it's a cliche, but uh, very happy that he was there for us to select. Uh, certainly dynamic. We didn't think we were going to get a, a shot at him at 13. So uh, exciting for our program, uh, having him play center with a, a young rising star and Jordan Gavin. Uh, real exciting time for us. And anytime you can add offense, uh, the only place you can really add it legitimately is through the draft. So uh this is a, a triple-A player. Uh, we're excited. He's a great kid. He brings the leadership leadership intangible. So fits our program and uh, certainly going to help us continue move onwards and upwards. Appreciate this, Roy. Thank you and congratulations on this selection and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Best of luck as well. Will do. Thanks so much. Cruz Paveo, 13th overall to the Tri-City Americans as the First round of the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft continues to roll here live from Calgary on WHL Live. The 2023 WHL Prospects Draft is brought to you by Kia, Kubota Canada, Real Canadian Superstore, and Remax. Next up is the Lethbridge Hurricanes at number 14. Now the Hurricanes have had kind of been in the middle of the, the round each of the last two years. Last year selecting a Will Sharp in the first round. Uh, the Hurricanes uh, uh, consistent playoff team uh, under Brent Kissio uh, since he took over as head coach and Peter Anholt uh, assumed the reins as general manager in Lethbridge. Uh, you know, you, you look at this group and uh, a younger group of prospects uh, that have already made impacts in Lethbridge. You look at the likes of Marquez and, and Braden Edwards uh, now uh, already contributing to this team. Uh, and, uh, you know, you have a guy like Will Sharp who's ready to step into the fold next year as well. Uh, you know, what are you looking for from Lethbridge here in terms of, of where they might go at number 14? Well, I think they could go a number of different directions, Chris, because as you mentioned, Pete Anhold and his staff have done an excellent job of, of drafting and, and covering off positions over the last few years. Will Sharp was an excellent pick for them in the middle of the first last year. And as you mentioned, McGill 
Miguel Marquez, already a dynamic player for them who's going to produce a lot of points. So the board's open for Lethbridge, still some excellent players on the board available to them. And, uh, you know, we'll see if they decide to go with a forward or a defenseman here. The Hurricanes at number 14, uh, just to give you a sense of who is up following, 15 is at Prince George, 16 Moose Jaw, and the Portland Winterhawks will go 17. But at 14, the Lethbridge Hurricanes uh, stand uh, now. Their pick is in. So let's go to Lethbridge, Alberta, where head scout Rob McLaughlin is standing by with the 14th overall pick. Lethbridge Hurricanes, uh, 14th pick overall, select from the Humboldt Broncos, Dane Boyker. Well, an excellent player off the board here from Humboldt, Saskatchewan. 103 points in 30 games for Dane Boyker and, you know, an elite electric forward with a wicked shot. This is one of my, you know, I think he's one of the most explosive players in the draft class in terms of how hard he pushes the pace, always plays with uh, with a ton of speed and puts defenders on his heels. Uh, you know, he can, he can score any way you want inside the zone. Obviously, his 47 goals this year, he kind of, you know, showing that elite ability to create offense in the zone uh, at, uh, at Sask first camp to in February, all the best Saskatchewan players. He really stood out there and asserted himself as a dominant forward at that level. This is an excellent pick, and uh, we expect him to score a lot of points going forward in the Western Hockey League, Chris. Well, you look at uh, Saskatchewanites uh, to put up 100-point seasons at that level entering their draft year. Braden Yeager, Kalen Lind, Berkeley Catton, just to name a few. But Dane uh, Boyker is the latest uh, member of that Humboldt uh, Broncos team and somebody we talked about off the top of the show uh, to uh, be selected in the WHL Prospects draft, going 14th overall to the Lethbridge Hurricanes. Rob McLaughlin, the Hurricanes head scout, is on the line now. Rob, tell me about the player. And, boy, how excited are you guys to add uh, another a legitimate offensive threat to your group at number 14? Well, I think we're really excited to get him at 14. Uh, you know, he's a he's a world elite player, and uh, he does everything at a high speed. His, his skating is phenomenal. Uh, his skill set is is very good. Uh, it, it shows by the points that he put up this year. And you know what? He's a game changer. He he can he can get get on the ice and change the game in, in one shift. So, you know what? We're very happy to to pick him where we did, and uh, yeah, looking forward to him from the Lethbridge. Seems like a versatile player as well, uh, you know, uh, not just a scorer, but somebody who can kind of complement line mates and, and help drive offense. Uh, you know, uh, speak to some of the things in his game that, you, that you've noticed that, that really kind of stand out to you. Well, he's a leader, and every time he's on the ice, you know, he, he can turn bad pucks in, into good pucks and, and change the game just to, with, with that, uh, how he does those things. And, uh, you know, he, he, he can score off the rush. He, he, can, uh, he can score. He can he can. Um, uh, you know, cause trouble in front of the net, score goals. There, he really, he's a he's 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 a complete package as as a forward and and going to be a top player in, in this league. Rob, thanks for this. Congratulations on the pick, and best of luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Yay. With Petrura Kings at number fourteen, go with Dane Boyker from the Humboldt Broncos. Fifteen, Prince George Cougars. As we go back to the BC Division now, uh, the Cougars uh, had the ninth overall pick a year ago, where they selected uh, Lee Shergott, another Saskatchewan player who had similar type numbers uh, to the fourteenth overall pick this year in uh, Dane Boyker. Uh, this year, the Cougars uh, to fifteen, they go. Uh, the pick is in. Let's go to Prince George now. The director of scouting for the Cougars, Bob Simmons, is standing by with the 15th overall selection. Thanks, guys. Uh, with the 15th overall selection, the Prince George Cougars are pleased to select from the Pilot Mound Hockey Academy in Manitoba defenseman Carson Carrolls. Well, an excellent pick here for the Prince George Cougars as Carson Carrolls from Cypress River, Manitoba goes off the board. 32 points in 20 games for Carrolls this season. And this is a very dynamic defenseman too. Great speed, elite vision, a very calm power play quarterback at the top uh, for whatever team he's playing for. And, uh, you know, this is a player that really came on and, and rose up draft boards in the second half of his season as well, uh, finishing, finishing 11th in CSSHL D scoring. But, uh, you know, in the playoffs, he was, he was first in scoring in that consolation prep round. Uh, in the Canadian Sports School League. This is a player that has uh, yeah, really improved over the course of this season already, and I'm sure Prince George is excited with the potential they see in Carson Carroll's. 
Power play quarterback for Manitoba, does the name Hudson Thornton ring a bell uh, in terms of Prince George Cougars who have been impact players in recent years from the blue line? Let's go uh, back to Northern BC now. Bob Simmons, the Cougars Director of Scouting, is standing by. Bob, Carson Carroll's the newest member of your organization. Speak to the player, the excitement level that the Cougars have in bringing him into the fold. Well, we're thrilled to bring Carson uh, into our organization. He's a player that we identified early on in the season. And as you said, uh, the last half of the season uh, really came on. Uh, the one thing that really stood out for us was his leadership ability and his character. Uh, Pilot Mound was often in tough in uh, many games against uh, some of those top tier teams. Carson put his team on his back on more than one occasion and uh, really, really acquitted himself well as, uh, as a leader and, and uh, a great person. Um, we did a lot of research and his character is just off the charts, not to mention his ability to play the game at a very high level. And, and we think uh, his long-term projection, uh, his ceiling is uh, very, very high and, and we're thrilled. Speak, if you would, just to the excitement level in Prince George. Of course, your club reaching the second round of the WHL playoffs this year and you know, uh, uh, hoping for a, for a big day as well at the end of June at the 2023 NHL draft. But you know, Carson Carroll is uh, now joining an organization that, that certainly seems to not just be on the rise, but certainly making its, its, its point and making its place, uh, not just in the BC division, but in the league as a whole. Well, the excitement level in Prince George, obviously, uh, as uh, the season progressed and as we got into the playoffs, uh, just uh, went through the roof. Uh, was reflected in the uh, attendance at our playoff games, and uh, you know the atmosphere around the city was unbelievable. And you know the excitement of having a couple of very highly projected players for the NHL draft, and and you know in my conversation with Carson and other uh, potential prospects. Uh, all that was observed from across Western Canada. So it speaks well, I think, for uh, the future of our organization and certainly speaks uh, to the great hockey community Prince George is. Bob, we appreciate this. Very well said. Thank you. Congratulations on the pick and best of luck the rest of the day. Thank you very much. Bob Simmons from the Prince George Cougars after the Cougars select defenseman Carson Carroll's 15. We have just seven selections remaining in the first round of the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. We can tell you, of course, uh, the draft is brought to you by Kia, Kubota Canada, the Real Canadian Superstore, and Remax. Of course, our live coverage here on WHL Live will consist of the first round for the remainder of the WHL draft. Uh, you can follow along on the WHL's Twitter account at the WHL and online whl.ca slash draft. At number 16, we go to the Moose Jaw Warriors, another club that reached the second round of the WHL playoffs. Uh, they have the 16th overall selection. The pick is in. So at this time, we will go to the friendly city where Warriors general manager Jason Ripplinger is standing by. Jason, the 16th overall pick is yours. The floor is yours as well. Just waiting uh, perhaps for some audio issues. Yeah, Jason, uh, it looks like you're muted. The Moose Jaw Warriors. Go. We got you coming here. Yeah, sorry. Jason, the 16th yeah. overall pick belongs to you. Okay. Moose Jaw Warriors are proud to select with our first pick, 16th overall, from the Airgy Extreme right defenseman Aaron Sawatsky. Well, Aaron Sawatsky, another dynamic defenseman off the board here in this draft class. The Didsbury, Alberta native, one of the best two-way defensemen in the draft class. The first thing you notice with Aaron, very, very smooth skater, uh, an excellent transitional defenseman who played in all situations for a very, very talented Airdrie team this season. You look at the abilities of, uh, of Sawatsky and, and, and really what you see first is that, that skating ability, that passing ability, the ability to really control the game in all three zones. And I think as a modern defenseman, that's kind of what you're looking for here. And you see the size already at five. 11 as well the ability to produce with 38 points in, in 33 games so a defenseman that can really give give moose jaw some ability in all three zones and i think ripper and his staff will be very excited to bring him into the fold in moose jaw 
The Warriors uh, have had a history of some pretty high-profile defensemen playing uh, in that club. You go back a decade or so to Morgan Riley, more recently Denton Matichuk, another player who was selected 16th overall two years ago, uh, who played in the league as a 16-year-old was Merrick Howell as well. Let's go back to Moose Jaw uh, GM Jason Ripplinger standing by. Aaron Sawatsky, the newest member of the Warriors. Jason, speak to the player and just the, the excitement level that your organization has in being able to select him here 16th overall. Oh, very exciting. Get a quality player um, in Aaron. Um, we're always looking for a good defenseman who can uh, make a good uh, first pass. And then, you know, he's a bit uh, dynamic too. I mean, uh, when you when you kind of bring him into the fold, uh, just speak, if you would, just, you know, the, the prospect pool that the Warriors now have uh, in terms of, you know, looking ahead to the 2023-24 season, uh, a player that, you know, will come to camp, uh, obviously, you know, can't play as a 15-year-old next year, but down the line uh, uh, projects to be a big part of your group. Yeah, for sure. He fits in our mold with uh, Merrick Howell and, and, and Schmidt and the rest of the young D coming up. So uh, we should be pretty good on the back end for years. Jason, appreciate this. Congratulations on the pick and best of luck the rest of the day. Thank you. Jason Ripplinger from the Moose Jaw Warriors, 16th overall. Uh, they select Aaron Sawatsky, a defenseman. Uh, it's uh, number 16 to uh, go to Moose Jaw. 17th pick belongs to the Portland Winter Hawks. As we go uh, back to the U.S. division, the Winter Hawks, uh, you know, again, uh, a team that typically kind of picks around this point in the first round, don't they? Uh, 18 mm -hmm. last year and, you know, 17 this year. Uh, but the pick is in at number 17 uh, for the Portland Winterhawks. So let's go now to the Rose City where Winterhawks Director of Scouting Mike Coughlin is standing by to make the 17th overall selection in the WHL Prospects Draft. Good morning. With the 17th pick in the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft, Wait till you see your yeah. Portland Winterhawks are proud to select defenseman Griffin Darby from Swift Current, Saskatchewan. Well, we're seeing a run of defensemen here, Chris, as another one goes off the board. Griffin Darby from Swift Current, Saskatchewan, already six feet tall. This is a big player, another another transitional defenseman here. And what I mean by that is a player that moves through the blue lines with, with a lot of, uh, of pace and grace. He controls the game very well. Uh, you know, a tempo-based player here who you know, stays calm, doesn't let the moment get too big, but he's also a fire and competitive player too. He competes very hard in the D zone. This is a player that also showed offensive ability with 35 points in 28 games, you know, kind of projects as one of those do-it-all defensemen for Portland. Not going to be super overly offensive, uh, but somebody that can really impact the game in all three zones. An excellent, excellent pick here as Griffin Darby goes off the board to Portland. Thanks, Taylor, for that REMAX report. Griffin Darby, number 17 to the Portland Winterhawks and the seventh defenseman selected third in a row here in the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. Let's go back to Portland now. Uh, Winterhawks Director of Scouting, Mike Coughlin, joining us here. Uh, Mike, uh, congratulations on the pick uh, here with Griffin Darby at number 17. Uh, speak, if you would, to the thought process uh, in, in terms of, of making this selection and, and bringing Griffin into the fold. Yeah, with Griffin, we feel that he's got a great chance to be a top pair defenseman in our organization. Real strong foundation of skills, uh, ability to move the puck, skating is is excellent. And uh, you know, when you're when you're making a first round selection, your your hope uh, when you hang on to that pick um, is you make these decisions that you can add a difference maker player. And we think Griffin will really elevate all the players around him. He's a extremely high character leader. Uh, great personality, energy guy in the room every day, and we just feel really fortunate to add him to our group. Obviously, uh, the Winter Hawks uh, have have had success in the uh, in the draft and with signing players as well, especially on the blue line with you know the likes of you know McCleary, who is from Swift Current, as is Darby, um, Eric Alsher, and Luca Cagnoni, Carter, Carter Souther, and just to name a few. I mean, uh, certainly uh, an exciting time uh, for your organization, and and uh, I mean just speak to to his ability to play a two way game. Uh, you know, it's certainly an important aspect of of defense uh, defense the defense position, I guess, uh, sure. in this day and age. Yeah, we play in a highly competitive division every night in the U.S. And, and uh, the ability of the defenseman to play in that kind of environment, to handle the physical play as well as, you know, play our style of game, which is to jump off the ice, move the puck, uh, be an offensive threat. We also think Griffin's got room to grow, and we look forward to working with him in his development. Mike, thanks for this. Congratulations. Best of luck the rest of the way. Okay, thanks, guys. 
Mike Coughlin from the Portland Winterhawks. 17th overall, Griffin Darby, a uh, defenseman from Swift Current, Saskatchewan, uh, going to the Portland Winterhawks. We have just five picks remaining here in the first round of the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. Up next are the Red Deer Rebels. And Red Deer, uh, of course, uh, uh, making some waves to the U.S. Uh, priority draft yesterday. Uh, this is a group that, uh, you know, we saw Ollie Josephson, a first-round pick from a couple of years ago, uh, really make an impact for that Red Deer Rebels club uh, this year. And now the next first round pick in Rebels history uh, will uh, come down the pipe. We uh, understand the pick is in uh, for the Red Deer Rebels. So let's go now uh, just north of us up Highway 2. Assistant General Manager Sean Sutter is standing by the 18th overall selection uh, in the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. Red Deer Rebels are proud to select from Humble Bantam U15, Right shot forward, Beckett Hamilton. Well, Beckett Hamilton, teammates with Dane Boyker, who we saw go off a, a few picks earlier, Chris, and you know they were probably the most dynamic duo in the Saskatchewan U15 League this season. This is an excellent offensive player, 83 points in 29 games for Beckett this season, 39 of them being goals, another player that can just fill the net. Him and Boyker were so dynamic together, and Hamilton, you know, a little smaller than, than Boyker, but certainly no less dynamic, and another player that plays with a lot of pace, very intelligent player, always in the right spots offensively, uh, you know, loves to to attack D-men, attack the Nets. Uh, this is a player that uh, is going to be very offensive for Red Deer moving forward and I think complements their prospect group really well. Beckett Hamilton, the newest member of the Red Deer Rebels. Let's go back now uh, to Red Deer's uh, draft room. Sean Sutter, the assistant general manager, is standing by. and uh, Another impact forward, Sean, for your group. Uh, congratulations on the pick. Uh, speak to uh, to the player's ability in Beckett Hamilton and and uh, you know how excited you are to welcome him, welcome him into the fold. Yeah, we really thought that Beckett came on in the second half, specifically in playoffs. I believe in the last 20 years since they've been uh, keeping stats in Saskatchewan, uh, he's been the highest producing forward, both in points and in goals and playoffs. So we think he's a guy that can really score, you know, and also make plays. And we think that's high end and he can be a he can be a driver out there with, uh, you know, also a little bit of hard, hardness, is, which is obviously what we try to uh, have in our top players. And you know, we think he can be a really good player for us. We're really happy to select him and welcome his family to Red Deer. You, you speak to the playoff performance, Sean. I mean, uh, it, is that perhaps an indication of, of Beckett's ability in your eyes and in your, your staff's eyes uh, to, to possess, for lack of a better term, grace under pressure? Yeah, I think he's a big moment player. Uh, you know, and I think he's a guy that, uh, you know, really improved in the second half of the season. And, you know, he's got some growing to do. Uh, but, you know, with his shooting and passing ability, he was a guy we felt like we couldn't, couldn't pass on. Thanks for this, Sean. Best of luck. Uh, congratulations on the pick, and best of luck the rest of the way. Thanks, guys. Sean Sutter from the Red Deer Rebels as number 18. They select Beckett Hamilton from Humboldt, Saskatchewan, and he follows the likes of Luke Fluswick, who defenseman from Calgary, who went 17th overall last year. Got a bit of a taste with the Rebels uh, this season as well. And, of course, Ollie Josephson, who is an impact 16-year-old in the league for the Rebels as well. There are four picks remaining in the first round. Three of these picks are held by teams who have more than one pick in the first round of the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft, beginning with the Brandon Wheat Kings. Now, Brandon, of course, uh, selected hometown talent Jackson Jacobson at number five. This is the third time in the past five years in which Brandon has held multiple first-round picks. They are at number 19 now. This is a pick the Wheat Kings acquired in the deal uh, that saw Jake Chason go to the Saskatoon Blades. Uh, so Brandon is at number 19, and the pick is in. So at this time, we will go back to Brandon for the second time uh, this morning. Uh, GRS, pardon me, Director of Hockey Operations, Chris Moulton, is standing by in Brandon with the 19th overall pick. With the 19th overall pick in the 2023 draft, uh, the Brandon Weekings are very proud to select from Rink Colonna U15 prep team defenseman Georgios Pantelis. Well, Gio Pantelis goes off the board here, the Victoria native, 6'2 already, Chris, a big player here and very, very talented player as well. He has excellent hands, 
moves well for a big man. 38 points in 28 games this year. He was teammates with Keaton Verhoff, who we saw go off the board in the top five there to Victoria. Uh, another CSSHL product with Rink Colonna, who brings a lot of ability to the Brandon Wheat Kings lineup. This is a player with great hands, great skill. He can make plays under pressure, constantly opening up passing lanes for himself. He actually played a bit of forward this year as well, showing his ability to play below the dots, create offense. This is a player that uh, is, is a very exciting project for, uh, for the Brandon Wheat Kings. A big defenseman for British Columbia who goes to the Brandon Wheat Kings organization. That, no, that doesn't ring any bells at all. <laughs> Flashbacks, Chris, absolutely. <laughs> Chris, our, our Taylor Green, a former member of the of Brandon Wheat Kings during his WHL career. Let's go back to Brandon now. Uh, Chris Moulton, the director of Hockey Ops, is standing by. Uh, Chris, uh, congratulations on the pick and on the morning so far. Uh, you had a forward at number five, and now you had a defenseman in Giorgios Pantelis at number 19. Uh, tell me about the player and, and uh, you know the latest in, in a line of defensemen to, to wear that Wheat Kings sweater. Uh, thanks, guys. Yeah, we're really excited about this player. Um, he's a big kid. He skates well. He reads the play well. He's always engaged. Uh, he's multifaceted in so many ways. And, uh, you know, getting to know the family a bit, you know, comes from a great group of people. And, and I think he's a great addition to our program. And he can move the puck. He defends well. Uh, he's not afraid to engage physically. So we think he's a great addition to our group. Certainly size on the blue line seems to be, uh, you know, something that the Wheat Kings have been all about in recent years, Chris, and, and Giorgios uh, certainly checks all the boxes in that respect, but uh, size and mobility as well in terms of being able to move around the ice. Uh, just, uh, you know, tell me a bit about you know, the, the, the ability you've seen from him uh, already uh, since kind of first laying eyes on him. Yeah, size is obviously nice to have, guys, but, you know, you can have size, but if you can't make plays and you can't move, it's a real tough game. So the best part about George is that he he can move. He's smart enough to make plays. He sees the ice. He creates offense. He does a lot of good things with the puck, and, um, you know, he'll be a great guy for us to transition the puck up the ice and also contribute offensively. Chris, thanks for this. Congratulations on the pick, and uh, we wish you the best of luck the rest of the way. Thank you. So Giorgios Pantelis joins a defense corps that uh, includes uh, Charlie Ellick, who is a 16-year-old player this year, played big minutes uh, for the Brandon Wheat Kings. He was a, a first-round pick in 2021. Uh, you know, you look at the likes of Quinn Manti as well, who was the WHL Scholastic Player of the Year. Of course, let's uh, remind everyone about what the WHL scholarship is all about. It is Western Canada's premier hockey scholarship for each year a player plays in the WHL. They are afforded a year's worth of tuition, textbooks, and just peace of mind in terms of being able to continue uh, along with education uh, following their time in the WHL. During the 2022-23 season, 364 players accessed the WHL scholarship, which represents an investment of over $2.4 million. For more information on the WHL scholarship, we invite you to scan the QR code, uh, which you see on your screen right now. Just three picks remain in the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft and we go uh, to a club again who has multiple picks and we go to a club that has selected at this particular number in each of the last two years. 20th overall, and that would be, of course, the Everett Silvertips, who at number 10 uh, earlier today uh, selected Breck Liskey, a defenseman from Manitoba. They have the 20th overall pick as well. Uh, the pick is in, so let's go to Everett now. Uh, Assistant General Manager Mike Fraser standing by for the second time today. Mike, welcome back to the show. Uh, please, if you would, uh, announce the 20th overall pick in the WHL Prospects Draft. Thanks, guys. For, for the uh, 20th selection, the Everett Silvertips are proud to select uh, from the Saskatoon Stallions, forward Kane Wilkie. Well, Kane Wilkie off the board, another skilled Saskatchewan forward goes here to Everett at number 20. Kane Wilkie showed that he can produce this season. 71 points in 29 games in the Saskatchewan League, good for eighth in scoring, tied fourth in assists with 43, showing his hockey IQ, a very smart player. But what I really like about this player is, is that he's, he's a pit bull in the offensive zone. He's very competitive, fiery, plays a lot bigger than his frame. Uh, so scouts, you know, love the competitiveness on this player, somebody that's not afraid to get in as an F1 on the four check. Uh, you know, be disruptive, and after he, you know, causes turnovers and, and creates havoc down low, he's able to turn that into offense. You know, uh, an exciting player here to add for the Everett Silver Tips at 20, Chris. Kane Wilkie, the newest member of the Everett Silver Tips, and when you think of 
goal scorers from Saskatchewan. You need not look too much further than Jackson Berezowski, of course, who is the all-time leading goal scorer in Everett Silver Tips franchise history and hails uh, from Yorkton in Saskatchewan as well and a bit of a pit bull in the offensive zone. Let's uh, let's be honest. Uh, let's go back to Everett now. Mike Fraser, uh, the assistant GM, joining us now. Uh, Mike, uh, uh, for the second time today, your club afforded the opportunity to make a first-round selection. Kane Wilkie is the man at number 20. Tell me about the player. Yeah, well, I, I think Taylor described him to a T. You know, he's a very tenacious player. We we love the style that he plays. We think it fits, uh, you know, the style that we play here in Everett. Uh, very skilled forward, makes plays, tenacious, hard on the puck, uh, and has obviously shown he can he can put the puck in the net and, and make good plays. So uh, we really like the pedigree he brings for us. You perhaps see him, you know, slotting in uh, alongside forwards uh, like Julian Mays and, and Lucas Kaplan and maybe another player who was uh, uh, an impact kind of setup man for your group and Jesse Heslop this year as well. Uh, to, you know, tell me about you know, kind of kind of where you see him fitting in as part of that group down the line. Yeah, hundred percent. Very very similar uh, style of game to those players you just described. Uh, you know, even just the thought of those guys playing on a line together is pretty exciting. So, uh, you know, we're excited to have him. He's going to fit in with our group and uh, we'll get him here to training camp in the fall and, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens, but he'll, he'll be a real exciting addition for us. Mike, thank you for this. Congratulations on the pick and we wish you the best of luck the rest of the way here today. Thanks, guys. Kane Wilkie, 20th overall to the Everett Silver Tips uh, as the first round is, well, nearing a close here. Just uh, two picks remain uh, in this uh, first round, uh, uh, number 21 and uh, number 22 on what is uh, one of the busier days on the WHL calendar, the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. Well, we have a bit of a pause in the action here. Taylor, uh, why don't we circle back, uh, you know, once upon a time, this was uh, kind of an experience that you went through as a player. And, and uh, you know, tell me a little bit about what that was like for you. Uh, you know, your draft year, um, you were a selection by the Seattle Thunderbirds uh, back in the day. But tell me a bit about, you know, what it was like, uh, you know, to experience and just maybe some of the some of the memories you have of drafting. Yeah, well, back in 2010, Chris, it feels like yesterday, but obviously a long time has passed now. And we didn't have the live feed back in those days to watch. So I remember you had to refresh on your computer. Uh, for my family, it was a big debate on uh, where I was going to go in the draft. I thought I could go as high as the middle of the first round. And so my family made the decision actually that I would stay home from school in case I had to be available to uh, do any media. And of course, in doing that, I jinxed myself and ended up uh, falling out of the first round and skipping my classes for nothing. Uh, but, you know, excited to be selected by Seattle in the second round. It was a very fun day. And I also remember the stresses of that day too. And I know there's a lot of families watching right now, waiting to be selected here as we go through the last few picks. And, uh, you know, my message to everyone, I think would just be that this is a snapshot in time. And certainly it's an honor to be drafted by a W WHL club, but really this is the start of your junior hockey journey. The work starts now and, you know, constantly our teams are adding new players, listing players that weren't drafted, training camp invites and things like that. So I would just encourage everyone at home to, you know, not be discouraged by the results of the day and, uh, you know, just enjoy it and, and take it for what it is, which is a, you know, a snapshot in time as, as we see it right now. The 2010 draft, uh, remember... The, the the Sam Reinhart draft was was one of the big names out of out of the Lower Mainland as well yourself as well from uh, Port Coquitlam and and certainly that '95 class in the in the Western Hockey League was one that that we'll look back upon fondly uh, as far as their contributions uh, were concerned in the uh, in the WHL and and now beyond uh, there are as we mentioned two picks uh, remaining here in the 2023 WHL prospects draft the first round. Um, and we uh, continue to await uh, what will happen next here as far as uh, that, uh, that is concerned. But, uh, I mean, just give me a sense here as, as far as the first 20 picks uh, have gone uh, overall. I mean, does it feel kind of like it's flown by a little bit for you? It's been a quick day, Chris, absolutely. And we've seen a lot of good players go off the board here. This is such a deep draft in terms of the you know the high-end talent available and so there's still good players on the board but we you know looking at the draft and how it's unfolded so far I think teams have made excellent selections these guys have obviously done their homework some very talented players off the board so far and uh, we're excited to, to, to see that and, and see what comes next year in the last couple of picks. The Saskatoon Blades were on the clock here at number 21 but we can confirm now that there has been a trade made um, for that 21st overall pick. Now, we can tell you 
that Saskatoon has traded that 21st pick to the Medicine Hat Tigers. And in exchange, the Blades receive pick number 29 in the second round, the f a fifth round pick in 2023, and Medicine Hat's second round pick in 2024. So to repeat, the Blades have traded pick number 21 to Medicine Hat in exchange for pick number 29 in this year's draft, a fifth round pick in this year's draft, and Medicine Hat's second round pick in 2024. Now the Medicine Hat Tigers made this move. Remember, they selected Liam Ruck from Asoyas, one of two twins, at number eight, and now they're at number 21. The pick is in. So without further ado, following this trade, let's now go to Medicine Hat for the 21st overall selection in the WHL Prospects Draft. Director of Player Personnel Bobby Fox is standing by. Thanks, guys. With the 21st overall pick, the Medicine Hat Tigers are happy to select from the Okanagan Hockey Academy center, Marcus Ruck. Well, who else could it have been, Chris? When you saw Medicine Hat move up the board, you figured there was a chance here that the twin connection was too big to pass up. Medicine Hat making the move to acquire Marcus Ruck from a Soyuz BC, again, the twin brother of Liam, who they drafted at ninth overall. This is a very dynamic player, second in CSSHL points, a setup man uh, for his brother who scored 53 goals. Marcus led the CSSHL in assists with 65. You know, you look at the Henrik and Daniel Sedin as a comparison, Marcus would be the Henrik Sedin of that pairing. Uh, very, very talented, uh, great stick skills, sees the ice very well, high IQ player, same as his brother. Um, you know, very excited that Medicine Hat was able to make this happen and that we're going to see a twin connection here down the road in Medicine Hat, Chris. And you kind of wondered, didn't you, uh, yeah, whether something might happen down the line here uh, with respect uh, once the Tigers uh, selected Liam Ruck at number eight. But Marcus Ruck goes number 21st to the Medicine Hat, or number 21, I should say, to the Medicine Hat Tigers. Uh, let's go now to Medicine Hat. Bobby Fox, the Tigers director of player personnel, is standing by. Bobby, you guys played Let's Make a Deal here late in round one. And uh, clearly, uh, this player was uh, someone who was attractive to you based on who you were able to select at number eight. Tell me about Marcus Ruck and, uh, you know, just how, you, how, you, how you've enjoyed now having a pair of twins in the fold. Oh, this is exciting for the Messinat Tigers. Uh, you can't have one brother without the other. They're both unbelievable players. Marcus, like you said, his vision, his, his skill, their chemistry is second to none. Of course, Taylor Green uh, making uh, the comparison to the Sedin twins. I think that's the, the the popular comparison when you're speaking about twins in the game of hockey. But boy, I mean, uh, it just seems to me like just speaking of both of them, you're looking at two dynamic offensive talents uh, at the uh, the the level they play at now uh, in U15. But I mean, certainly, certainly, you you touch on it. Excitement. Uh, just just tell me a little bit about about the player and and, and the pairing uh, that you have now, and and just some of the some of the skills that that are most exciting to you guys as a group well like like i said marcus is the setup guy um they have an uncanny ability to find each other on the ice um you know we they can't be separated they're they're almost one guy in in essence so um there's not much much more i can say Exciting stuff, no doubt about it, uh, Bobby. We'll let you get back to the draft uh, floor here and and uh, continue to, to work uh, through the, the rest of the day here. Busy day, exciting day for the Medicine Hat Tigers. Congratulations, and uh, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. So there you go, Bobby Fox and the Medicine Hat Tigers general manager, Willie Desjardins, swinging a deal with the Saskatoon Blades to get Marcus Ruck. Both Ruck twins go to the Medicine Hat Tigers. Uh, and boy, I mean, uh, we were we were kind of waiting for to see if there might be a bit of fireworks here uh, in this first round. And, and wouldn't you know it, uh, the Medicine Hat Tigers come through and, and grab uh, the Ruck twins out of a Soyuz PC. Absolutely. Great pick. Great job by Medicine Hat to, sni to sneak up in the draft here and grab the two brothers. Anytime you can see two brothers, especially ones with this level of connection, Chris, play together. It's exciting. Can't wait to see what they do in Medicine Hat in years to come. We have one more selection in the first round. It is uh, the Spokane Chiefs who earned this selection. Uh, they received it from the Winnipeg Ice uh, uh, earlier in the year. So Spokane, who remember, uh, selected Mathis Preston at number three, will round out the first round here at number 22. Let's go back to Spokane. General Manager Matt Bardsley is standing by with the 22nd selection in the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. With the 22nd selection of the WHL Prospects Draft, Spokane Chiefs are very proud to select 
from Okotoks, Alberta, Okotoks Oilers U15 team, goaltender Carter Essler. Well, I believe the most athletic goaltender in the draft class goes off the boards here, Chris. Carter Essler from Okotoks, uh, you know, an excellent season with a high-powered Okotoks team, and he backstopped them to an incredible record this season in the AEHL. Put up a 925 this year save percentage, uh, one of the best in the AEHL. Again, he brings that level of athleticism, competitiveness in the net. He moves around, uh, you know, he has obviously excellent technique, but it's really that fiery competitiveness that he brings to the crease that Spokane's going to like with this pick. We saw him at Alberta Cup and he was had a 987 save percentage in three games in Alberta Cup with all those elite shooters shooting on him like Ty Mounier and others. Uh, you know, this is a player that's shown he can do it at the highest level when, when the going gets tough. A great selection here by Spokane. Carter Essler, the goaltender from Okotoks, is the 22nd overall pick in the 2023 WHL draft or prospects draft. Let's uh, go back to Spokane now. Welcome Matt Bartsley back onto the show, the Chiefs GM. Matt, uh, you go with the goaltender with the final pick of the first round. Uh, tell me about Carter Essler, and uh, you know what, what excites you about this player? Well, we simply we feel he's the best goaltender in the draft. Uh, we love his game, his composure, his athleticism. Uh, he has a calmness about him. Uh, that's what I really like when, when we watch him play, no matter what's going on in the game, he's consistent, he's calm. I think, you know, he gives a really good, uh, you know, presence to his team, to his teammates, no matter what's going on that you, you know, you give the, the feel that, Hey, we're in this, you know, I am the best goaltender and, uh, and simply he's a winner and uh, he's driven. He's extremely focused. Uh, he's a, he's a goaltender, but a person that really studies his position knows everything that's going on around the league, uh, who he competes with at his position. Um, you know, and again, like I said, he's a winner and, and somebody that we feel is going to be really good for us in the future. We have some good goaltending depth right now, but to add a player and a goaltender like Carter and also the quality of the person, um, you know, we felt for us, we're really excited that we're selecting, selecting him at, at number 22. I was going to say, you, you know, you, you guys, the Chiefs went went a bit young with the goaltenders this year with uh, Dawson Cowan and uh, Cooper Michaelak, the two 17-year-olds, and of course Michaelak, uh, uh, you know, earning a spot on the NHL Central Scouting Rankings uh, uh, toward the end of the season here, and Cowan really uh, performing well as well down the stretch for your group. I mean, when you welcome a, a younger goalie like uh, Carter into the fold here and, and bring him into Spokane uh, for his first WHL training camp, he's certainly joining a group in, of goaltenders that, that uh, you know, it really point to a bright future uh, between the pipes for Spokane. Yeah, I agree. And I think also with, like you said, with, with both Cooper and Dawson, uh, with them uh, being 18 next year and then 19 the following year, that would be the year that Carter would be eligible to come in at 16. So I think that gives us a good, uh, a good balance there. And, uh, and again, when, when we're looking at this part in the draft and we feel that we have the best player at that position, uh, we felt very confident and excited that he was there for us to select him. Matt, congratulations on the pick. We appreciate you doing this, and uh, we wish you the best of luck the rest of the day. Great. Thank you very much. Carter Essler rounds up the first round of the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft. Uh, boy, it's flown by in just a little bit over 90 minutes here uh, at our studio in Calgary as uh, we've completed now the first round. The teams are holding a, a brief intermission uh, prior to the start of the second round and the conclusion of the draft, of course, uh, for the uh, the latest uh, draft results, we encourage you to uh, follow along on WHL's Twitter page at the WHL or uh, visit uh, the live draft tracker that can be accessed at whl.ca slash draft. A draft that saw the Prince Albert Raiders uh, pick first and second overall, selecting defenseman Daxon Rudolph, forward Riley Boychuk, number one and two, uh, Spokane, forward Mathis Preston at number three. The Victoria Royals uh, went to the blue line, selecting Keaton Verhoff at number four, Jackson Jacobson of the Brandon Wheat Kings, rounding out the top five today. When you look back, Taylor Green, at the first round of this 2023 WHL Prospects draft, uh, just give me a sense, uh, you know, how excited uh, these teams should be to be able to welcome players of this quality into the WHL. Well, I think like we spoke before, Chris, an excellent draft class this season. Our teams clearly did their homework and added some excellent players to the fold of their prospect groups this year. And, you know, looking at it from the families and the kids that were selected here in the first round and having been through a WHL draft myself, I know how exciting that is. And so congratulations to all our first round picks this year. And we look forward to a, a bright future for all 22 of them and the ones here to be selected still later in the draft. 
Yeah, that's right. It makes for a busy day. And uh, boy, I tell you what, we will be on top of coverage for the rest of the day. But as far as our live coverage is concerned, uh, this is where we will draw that to a close. I have to tell you, though, it's been fun doing this with you. I know it's your first time on the desk. Uh, uh, give me a sense. I mean, were you, were you a little nervous to be on the camera? You were doing the Remax reports last <laughs> year, but those were taped. Uh, how, did, how did it feel to be live this year? Oh, it was fun, Chris. Well, thanks to you as well for doing all the hard work and all the tough talking. And I just got to provide some uh, some player notes on the guys that I'd watched this season. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I appreciate you guys having me on the desk and look forward to doing it again. It's been fun. It's been our third draft in, well, just uh, over a year and a half here uh, from the WHL studios in Calgary. Uh, for producer Corey Bacacus, social media expert Matthew DeMille, and uh, communications director Taylor Roca, Taylor Green, my name is Chris Wall. Thank you so much for joining us here. Uh, this has been the 2023 WHL Prospects Draft.